I did this video last year and I thought it would be a good idea to do an updated one just doing a full face of the number one best sellers at Sephora. So when you go on the Sephora website, you can search by category of the makeup item that you want or makeup products and then you can sort it by best sellers. So I imagine that day by day sometimes these items might change but some of these have been bestsellers since last year and some haven't. Some shocked me, some I didn't like, some I loved. So let's get into it. You can definitely tell Sephora is very heavily influenced by TikTok. <laughs> I got into makeup TikTok this year and all of these products I see all of the time. Well, not all of these, but a lot of them. Anyways, let's get into face primers. So the number one best-selling face primer is a really good one. This was one of my favorites last year. This is the Rare Beauty Pore Diffusing Primer, and this does just that. It diffuses pores, and I also find it to be quite hydrating. So I really like this. I'm very excited to see that it's bestseller. So this is what the consistency of the product looks like. I'm just going to get it on both hands, and I'm going to focus it on my cheeks because that's where I have the most pores as well as it's the driest. And then with whatever is left going to apply everywhere else. Try not to over apply too much primer. This is a mistake that I make as well, but I think if you apply too much primer, it has the reverse effect of making your makeup last and look better. So I did one pump and I am spreading that across the face and instantly my skin feels more hydrated, more plump, and it definitely feels like a much better canvas before makeup. All right, foundation. I'm actually really shocked that this foundation is number one. It's really, really nice. I've been talking about how much I enjoy it, but I think it went viral recently, so that's why it's the number one bestseller. It's the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. I've put this in my favorites. I really liked it. It didn't get the hype that it deserved when it launched, and then I think people caught on, and it is a beautiful skin-like foundation. It's not an all-time bestseller foundation, if you ask me, but I think it does deserve a temporary place in the best selling list because it is one of the best foundations in my opinion that have launched this year. So what amazes me about this foundation is how skin like it looks on the skin but it still gives a good medium coverage. It feels quite lightweight so I'm going to start off by just spreading it out with my fingers so that we don't over apply the product which is something I am more often than not guilty of. I'm gonna use my Patrick Ta Beauty Four Face Number Two brush. I got this in a PR package and it's bomb, who knew? I used to never be excited about brushes and PR packages from makeup companies. Like I love getting brushes from brush companies cause you know, they do what they do best. But normally with cosmetic companies or makeup companies, I don't get excited about brushes, but this one for Patrick Ta, really, really nice. You know what I didn't search with the best-selling brushes from Sephora were? They're probably the Sephora collection brushes, to be honest, because I'll speak about this later, but I think they've rigged their website and put so many Sephora collection products as the best sellers. But this is just with quite a thin layer. You can see how it looks. Kind of exactly like skin, right? I think it looks so good. I have a little bit of extra on the cap, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this to places on my face that could use a little extra coverage. So for me, that's usually the center of my face, and I've broken out a little bit right here, so we'll apply some here. And then the cheeks right here could use a little bit more product. Boom! And doesn't that look so nice? So this for me is an ideal everyday foundation. I probably wouldn't pick this for like special events or just days that I want my makeup to look perfect, but for every day, I really have been enjoying it. Let's go ahead and move on to eyebrows. This is just the order that I like to do things. So the number one best-selling eyebrow pencil from Sephora was the Sephora Collection Retractable Brow Pencil. This is waterproof, and this is a really nice brow pencil. I believe this is a bestseller because it's half the price of all the other eyebrow pencils at Sephora. It's only like $11, and it gets the job done. It's not the best brow pencil at Sephora, the second place was the ABH brow pencil, which I think is better. I also think the benefit is better, but 
uh, for half the price. Totally get it. It still is a nice one. I have mine in the shade medium brow. So I'm going to go ahead and brush up and then I'm going to define down here. Going to get the shape that I want. Then I'm going to brush down and draw in my arch. So I would say how this differs from the ABH and the benefit is I feel like those two have a little bit more of a dryness to them, which I think creates a little bit more of a realistic looking brow. This one has a hint more moisture in the product, so I feel like the hair light strokes are just a little bit less realistic. But, I mean, these are minute, very, very tiny differences that at the end of the day, nobody's gonna notice besides a super picky person like me. <laughs> so it still is a really nice brow pencil and for $11, I think it's a great pickup. Now for eyebrow gel, the number one best-selling eyebrow gel was one that I don't think I've ever tried before. So I have a brand new one here. This is the Benefit Gimme Brow and it's tinted, which I don't like tinted brow gels, but we'll try it. I got excited because I saw the Kosas brow gel on there. That was the number one best-selling clear brow gel, but I was like, I'm not gonna cheat since I haven't tried this. Let's try it. So I have mine in the shade 3.5 and this is just a tiny little cute thing. Now I'd imagine this is so popular for using without a brow pencil, but I thought I would just give it a try. And I like Benefit brow products. I've tried a lot of their brow products, just for some reason, not this one. I think I was turned off because it was tinted, but actually this is nice. It's not looking too globby in my eyebrows, especially since it's just open. What I don't like about tinted brow gels is I feel like they give too much tint at once and it makes your eyebrows look really splotchy and messy and heavy. I'm not getting that from this, so that's nice. And I know Benefit has a nice gel in their line. Their normal eyebrow gel is one of my all-time favorites. That's why I'm surprised that one wasn't at the bestsellers list. But this one is still nice. We'll see how it sets down what the hold is like. I would like to try this without any brow pencil to see what this does for the brows, but that's nice. It, it did actually make a nice addition to the eyebrow on top of the brow pencil, so I'm pleasantly surprised by that. You guys were right. If you're the one buying these, that is a nice tinted brow gel. We can go back to the face makeup now. I have this blockage in my head where I can't apply my makeup unless my eyebrows are done and shaped because it really creates the canvas for me. But the number one best-selling under eye corrector at Sephora are these babies from Charlotte Tilbury. I have mine in two shades. I'm gonna go with shade number two medium. The number one is for quite fair people, I would say. So I think number two is gonna be the most universal shade. Love the packaging of these. They are so cute. They're like the little powders, but in tiny form. And this is a really great quality color corrector. So the number two best-selling color corrector was the Becca, well the Smashbox X Becca color corrector and that one's nice too but I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit less moist. I don't know and I feel like it lasts longer. It's a little bit more appropriate under concealer because I think having a color corrector underneath concealer that's a little bit more on the drier side is great because you don't want the concealer to area to be too hydrated because then it might slip and slide. It's a balance. It depends on your under eyes, but I think the Charlotte Tilbury just has a more thin, less disruptive consistency to it. And this is great. It got completely rid of like the purples and the blues. This is also optimal for acne spots covering as well. Use a color corrector before you put concealer over top of acne spots. It will help so much. You'll need so much less product. Now concealer, oh my gosh, I think this has been Sephora's number one bestseller for like 10 years. Last year when I did this video, this one was also the concealer that I featured. Good Old NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I can't, I can't believe this is still on there. Like, I feel like it's a staple concealer that you're always gonna buy, but there's been so many good popular concealers that have launched that I don't know how this is still number one because 
while people are always gonna talk about this, they don't talk about it that much. It's a great concealer though, don't get me wrong. I love this concealer, I used it in my bridal kit when I was a bridal makeup artist. It's completely foolproof. You're not gonna make a mistake if you purchase this concealer, but there are concealers that I like better, but this one is still a top-notch one. I have mine in the shade Canel, and I'm just going to put this in the inner corner of the eye where I want the blue covered. Do you remember if you watched YouTube back in the day, the best-selling shade was Custard, and even though Custard really was not for every skin tone, everybody bought Custard <laughs> anyways. I bought Custard and it was way too dark for me. I'm gonna use my Beauty Blender. We're gonna blend this out. Now, I like this concealer because it isn't too drying for the under eye, but it also isn't too hydrating in that it is so wet that it moves and it sinks into the fine lines. It has a little bit of staying power, so while it's not super hydrating, it really doesn't move, which actually works well with the movement of the under eyes. So I think it, it's a staple concealer product. I, I can see why it's still a bestseller after all these years. I can't believe it, it's still the bestseller after all these years, but it has a really nice light consistency to it. Doesn't look heavy on the under eyes. It, it's a great staple product very beautiful. I can see why it has the cult following that it does. Now I do have some powder, but before we do that, I also have some cream bronzer. So the number one best-selling bronzer is of no surprise to me at all because I stink and love this product. This is the Rare Beauty Cream Bronzer. This is number one between cream and powder bronzers, the best seller. It's amazing. It's super emollient. It's very easy to use and cream products have really become very trendy over the last year. So that's why these are so popular. My perfect shade is Happy Soul. It has a little bit more of a neutral undertone to it. I love it. Let's use it. So I'm gonna take my new favorite BK Beauty 109 brush and you can actually apply the stick right to the face. I'll show you because it performs so nice that you are able to apply it in that way. Some products, you know, they just don't blend well enough. So you can't apply them directly to the face, but this is one where you can. But doing it like this is a little quicker. And you can see how perfect this shade is. This is an ideal cream bronzer formula. I, I can't say anything negative about it. So even if you apply it like this, look, <laughs> it still will just blend out seamless. It is perfect for a beginner to make up or just somebody who doesn't care about makeup that much, you know, they just want good products to use until they're done with it and just to have some makeup, this is an ideal product for somebody like that. You can't go wrong with this. So I'm gonna actually get some on my ring finger and we're gonna do a little bit of a nose contour as well. I love this brush from BK Beauty. It's the perfect shape for this. Now I know Happy Soul is the best selling shade for most skin tones, but Always Sunny, I really like to bring in a little bit of warmth and add a definition. So I'm just gonna focus that right under here and then I'm gonna use that to sharpen up my double chin a little bit. And then the trick is to make sure you get behind here. That will sharpen everything. Then look at this, it's a dark, intimidating shade. Let's just go ahead and finish the rest of the face with the cream products. I am gonna use some powder products over top, but the number one best-selling blush of liquid cream and powder blushes, like this is number one, not shocked by this at all, is also by Rare Beauty, and it is the soft pinch touch whatever liquid blushes. These are super trendy over on TikTok, so I am not surprised. I think today we're gonna get like a pinky mauve -y look, so the shade Hope is gonna be perfect. So this is what I'm gonna use. I am gonna use a powder blush after this just for the sake of talking about more popular products in other categories, but we're gonna start off with this. It is really beautiful, however, it is also really pigmented, so I'm gonna use the brush that I used to blend out my foundation and that will kind of tone it down a little bit. Oh, it's a beautiful product. At first, when this first launched, I was like, I don't know, this is a little crazy. But now that I know how to use it, it is gorgeous. It has such a pretty skin-like finish to it. Skin-like, but like juicy, you know? It, it does have a better finish to the skin than your natural skin in terms of glowiness. But if you get in a more intense shade, 
please be careful, especially if you're on the lighter side like me. But yeah, I see why this is the number one bestseller and I'm not surprised because of how trendy it is. And then the last thing is a highlighter. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed about this. You're gonna notice a trend because it's another Rare Beauty product. The Cheek Products Rare Beauty is like killing the game, the popularity, the liquid luminizer. It's the best selling one. I feel like everybody's off of powder highlights. Nobody uses powder highlights anymore, which is disappointing to me because I don't like liquid highlights. Like I don't like them at all. I don't like this one. Now this shade's a little deeper. I do have one that is lighter that I like more, but I just want a little bit because I don't really like liquid luminizers. If I'm being honest, I was never really impressed by this luminizer. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury one is better, and there's a couple other highlighters that I like better. So this one is one that I could probably disagree on. Now this shade in Mesmerize is a little bit close to my skin tone, so it actually is more natural, which I prefer. Like this one is more of a, is she just that beautiful and glowy, or is she wearing highlight kind of feel to it? I don't know, I've never much cared for this highlight, but we'll use it since um, most of you guys like it. So <laughs> I'm the one that's kind of on the outside here, but <sighs> it's fine, it's pretty. I would have preferred it to be something else. So that is it for the cream products for the face. Let's finally set with a little bit of powder here. So for the under eyes, I guess in the whole face, because this is the number one best-selling powder, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Charlotte Tilbury and Rare Beauty really are like the brands of the year. I'm very happy, I really like this powder. It's not my favorite powder. I love my Huda Beauty powder more, but this is in the top five for sure. So I'm gonna actually use shade number one to set the under eyes. And just my little note of my opinion on this powder, it's not my favorite to set the under eyes. I feel like my under eyes look a little more dry and just not as smooth when I set my under eyes with this but it's fine. I do like this powder though to set makeup. I feel like anywhere except the under eyes, it's super lightweight and you can apply as much as you want and it never looks cakey. And also this is one of my favorite touch up powders. I feel like when you put this in your purse and you need to touch up your face cause it's looking oily, this refreshes it and you look literally good as new. So I'm going into the shade number two, just to kind of put this everywhere else because it's a little closer to my skin tone. Gorge. And for blush, the Rare Beauty is the best selling blush, but the best selling powder blush is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow, which is a stunning blush. I have loved this for years. I was like, when it became viral on TikTok, I'm gonna be that person, but I knew about it first. I loved it first, and it is the business. And don't sleep on the coral version of this one. This one in coral is also gorge. So let's go ahead and give ourselves this cheeky glow. This is also really good for that cold girl makeup that's really popular. I'm just gonna use it to add some color back into my face. Honestly, you can use the Rare Beauty. The Rare Beauty does pretty good over a set face as well. But I just wanted to offer you opinions on different products, so. We're talking about the best powder blush. And this is gorgeous, it looks great on so many skin tones. Oh, I forgot, I did want to also talk about the best-selling powder bronzer, which has been the best-selling powder bronzer also for many years. Benefit Hula, not a surprise. It's such a versatile shade as well. It goes with a lot of skin tones, obviously not like deep and dark, but they do offer a hula shade that's darker for those skin types. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this, I don't know, just on the outskirts, just to share it with you guys. I didn't really need it, but we'll use it anyways. Ideally, I would have done this before the powder blush, but it's fine. I'm literally, you're not even gonna notice it. Double chin, be gone. But this is a really, really solid bronzer. I also use this in my bridal makeup kit because you can't go wrong with it, and it's never gonna go out of style. And then the last step for face makeup, the last popular item, setting spray. Thank goodness, because this is my favorite. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. It legitimately does make your makeup last longer, and I swear, I swear, it will make your makeup look more flawless as well. I don't know what it is about it, but let's put it on. Here we go. Mm, and it smells so good. I'm gonna let that dry and do one eye, 
and I'll be back. Okay, now the best-selling eyeshadow palette. I am shocked. I literally have not heard anybody talk about this palette in years. I don't know if maybe it was on sale for Black Friday or something, but it was full price on the website. I just... Is this really a bestseller? The Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. Oh, I didn't even think I still had this. I haven't seen anybody talk about this, but apparently it's the best seller. So I remember last year, the Urban Decay Wild West, I think, was the best seller. And I was shocked by that, too. But I have no words. I'm, I'm just shocked. And the quality of it is... Eh, like it's okay you can get a pretty look it's great for the everyday person honestly if you're not into doing really intricate eyeshadow looks you just want to put some color on your eyelid this is very nice to have it's a great beginner palette and that's probably why it's a bestseller but still shocked so yeah urban decay naked three i did a neutral look with this palette very natural because you can't get much more with this so to prime the eyelids we're gonna go with the number one best-selling eye primer which is urban decay primer potion this one has been super popular like since I, I can remember 10 years ago it is a really really nice eyeshadow primer great for oily eyelids so we're gonna go ahead and put this on the eyelid blend that out i just like to use a sponge Okay, Miss Naked 3, let's uh, hop in. I'm gonna go ahead and use the shade Strange right here, which is this kind of shimmery white. It's not super shimmery, it's more satin, but I'm gonna use this to get underneath the brow and kind of brighten up this area. Like, it's not that this palette is bad, but I would not in a million years ever guess that this is the best-selling eyeshadow palette. <laughs> after all these years. And then I'm gonna go ahead into the shade Limit right here. I'm gonna use this as my transition color. I just feel like this palette is a little outdated. It's a gorgeous palette. I actually really like it and the colors are more trendy now than they were a few years ago. So, you know, it's time has come back in that the color story is quite trendy. But the ratio of shimmers to mattes, I think, is a little outdated. The formulas that they decided to use for specific shades don't make as much sense anymore for how most people are doing their makeup. It's still a nice palette, though. I just, I can't believe it's still number one. That's so funny to me. And then I'm going to go into the shade Nooner right here. I'm going to put this in the outer corner and then along the lower lash line. You can see I had to duct tape, not duct tape, but use tape because the mirror fell out on mine. This is just gonna add a little bit of depth. And then to add the most amount of depth, we're gonna go into dark side. Like if I were to redo this palette, we definitely need more matte shades for definition because you can't get a lot of definition with this palette. So I'm just gonna focus this closer to the lash line, not blending it up quite so high, almost winging it out because that's just what's flattering for my eye shape. And while the quality of this palette, it's not bad, it's not amazing. Like, I'm having to do a lot of building up for this shade. I'm going to use the brush that I used for Nooner. I'm sure I've done this look on my channel before. I've used this palette a few times. Literally one of my first tutorials ever that I did on my channel was with this palette. It was like a, a Valentine's Day tutorial or something from 2018. Okay, I mean, that's pretty, right? And then for the eyelid color, kept it very simple. I'm gonna go into a trick right here. I guess this is why Urban Decay keeps coming out with eyeshadow palettes that are the naked palettes because while I feel like they're so overdone and I don't see too many people buying them, they have to be if this is a bestseller and that's why they keep coming out with them. This is a pretty shade. I really like this shade. Uh, but this palette honestly is really great if you like cooler toned colors and you're just looking for something natural. Definitely don't buy it full price though because this is always on sale for 50% off. So hold off for that. Okay, so for eyeliner, I feel like Sephora was totally lying. I could be wrong, but the top two eyeliners were Sephora Collection eyeliners. And I just have so many eyeliners in my collection and I didn't have those. But I've tried a couple of the eyeliners from Sephora Collection and I just didn't like them. I didn't think they were worth it. So I went to the third most popular. Sorry, but I'm not going to spend the money on Sephora Collection eyeliners when I know I don't like them. So the third best seller is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil. I have 
the shade smoke out because it's not as dramatic as black and I thought we'd do something more natural but this is a really great eyeliner pencil it's very smooth and it lasts a long time this one has been a staple for many years it's because it's really really good so for this I'm just going to start off with the wing and then glide it along the lash line and then kind of blend it into the eye lashes. And then I'm gonna use my finger and soften it because I am going for more of a smudged, smoky kind of look because we're keeping it more on the natural-ish side. So again, same thing over here. Kind of wing it out, fill it in. And then use your finger to smudge it. I'm also going to go ahead and smudge it just like right along the lash line, not in the waterline. I'm going to take a small pencil brush and kind of smoke that out as well. Just for something nice and smudged, but for a little added definition. Now I totally did cheat on eyelashes as well. This is the number one best-selling mascara from Lancome, but I have so many mascaras in my collection I didn't want to buy another one. So I'm going to go ahead and use the number two best-selling mascara, which is the Ilia mascara. And I don't have it, so let me grab it. I grabbed the wrong one. So this is the Limitless Lash Mascara, and honestly, you guys, it's the number two bestseller, and I don't even like it. It doesn't do much for my lashes. I don't have much to work with when it comes to eyelashes, but this one, it doesn't do much, so, but we're going to use it. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this on my lower lashes and my upper lashes. I'm going to do this real quick. So another thing I don't like about this mascara is like one side of it is a normal brush. Let me see if I can show you. One side of it is like a normal brush and then the other side is like a lash comb. I always stab myself in the eye with the comb side. And I'm just so used to twisting the wand, I forget that this one is different and I end up stabbing myself. It's painful. I don't like this mascara. My lashes look okay, but meh. Nah. And the number one best-selling false lashes at Sephora were Sephora collection ones. Honestly, you guys, I purchased multiple Sephora collection lashes. I don't like them. I feel like the band doesn't really bend to my eye and I always have the ends popping up, so I'm not even gonna use them because I don't like them. So I'm just gonna quickly pop on a pair of Ardell Demi Wispies to make my makeup look a little bit more enhanced and we'll finish off with the lips, which is really exciting. Whew, love a good false lash. Let's finish up with lips. I'm happy with the best sellers. Starting off with lip liners, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheats, which I think are a phenomenal lip liner and also have a phenomenal range of colors. For today, I'm going to use the shade Pillow Talk 2 Medium. So I'm just going to apply this and I like these lip liners because they apply very smooth, but they still last a really long time. And guys, as I'm looking at my eye look, this Naked 3 palette is perfect for those smoky, hazy looks. I think this is going to look so bomb on like green and hazel eyes. So that's that for lip liner. And then lipstick, the best-selling lip formulation, I think is because it's on super deep discount, but I think it's a nice formula. So maybe look into the Sephora collection. Like they're the lip stories of different locations. They're really, really nice. Again, Sephora totally rigs it so that they're first, but I have mine in the shade somewhere in Spain, which is not sold right now. And it also is not matching this look, but I'm gonna use it anyways. It's a really, really creamy formulation. These are really cool because the colors are based off of different cities. So I'm just going to apply this. But yeah, I think this is a phenomenal formula with how creamy it is. I'm really happy that you can get it for super cheap and I'm fine that it's the number one bestseller. Now lip gloss. I definitely expected it to be something else, but I'm not mad about the Tower 28 Shine On lip glosses being the bestseller. So my thing with these is I feel like they don't last long enough because they're almost a little bit too slippery, but they look really, really good on the lips and I love the colors that they have. I love Tower 20 as a brand. So these are very, very nice lip glosses and they also have a really nice neutral color range with colors that are just gonna go with a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the shade Cashew today to kind of warm up the lip that I have on right now. So just gonna put this over top. It is a pretty formula, isn't it? and it's super duper comfy. I 
would say it's a bestseller worthy product. Maybe not for years to come like NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, but it is a nice one. So give me a moment to pull myself together and I'll be back to see you guys out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is the final look. Each item on my face is the current number one best-selling product at Sephora. And I think my makeup looks really, really nice. I really like this makeup look. It's quite smoky, hazy, smudgy, and it better wear a long time today. I really think it will, but let me know what you think of these products down below. Do you think they deserve to be bestsellers? Is there anything that you think deserves to be a bestseller that's not? I'm pretty happy with everything that was bestsellers. The biggest shocks to me were the Urban Decay Naked and the, I guess I'm not shocked about Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer being number one, but it's not my favorite. I don't know, there, but there's a lot of really great ones here, and there isn't a product really that I don't recommend that I used in today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful, and found it something fun to watch. I hope you guys are enjoying Vlogmas, so I will catch you guys in the next one. Make sure you are subscribed so that you can catch tomorrow's video. Bye guys, have a good one.